so as we discussed we kept this uvl as it is but we have divided this udl of magnitude p into p by 2 on this half region and p by 2 on this half region so this is the half udl and this is the half udl now this base will change according to this new modified udl so this base for ul remains same this base for ul remains same because we we have not made any change to this ul but to this udl we have made change so previously for udl of magnitude p the base was b now we have divided this this total udl into half udl of p by 2 so this total base b will also get divided into b by 2 now for this udl p by 2 the base is p by 2 and for the second half udl p by 2 the base is b by 2 so in this way as the udl of magnitude p is divided into two parts of each magnitude p by 2 the base b is also get divided into two base b by 2 b by 2 so now here after we have to draw one more diagram for to convert this uvl into point load again just to convert this uvl into point load to find out its position and to find out the position of point load for this half udl and to find out the position of point load for this half udl now just remember one thing that in order to find out the position of uh, point load for this half udl remember that the point load will act at the center of its base so for this half udl the base is b by 2 so point load will act at the center of this b by 2 base similarly for this udl of magnitude p by 2 the point load will act at the half of this base b by 2 that means at the center of this b by 2 the point load will act for the uvl the point load acts at the distance of one third of its base from the maximum intensity now the maximum intensity of this uvl is at this point so from this point at a distance of one third of base now base is a and one third of base will be a by 3 so from this maximum intensity of uvl the force will act at a by 3 distance so from this point at a distance of a by 3 the point load will act similarly for this uvl maximum intensity is here so from the maximum intensity at a distance of one third of base that is at a distance of a by 3 the point load will act from this maximum intensity so it would be here somewhere here at a distance of a by 3 from this maximum intensity point so that we have to show in the next diagram so as I, as I have explained, we have to convert this UVL into point load. So now this uh, point load for this UVL will act from this maximum intensity at a distance of one third of base that is at a distance of A by 3. So from this point of maximum intensity, so this is the line of maximum intensity. So from this line at a distance of A by 3, the point load for this UVL will act. So this is the magnitude of this UVL which is nothing but the magnitude of this point load and the distance, this distance will be A by 3, this distance will be A by 3. Similarly, we have to convert this half UDL into point load whose base is b by 2 so it will act at half of this base b by 2 as per the rule of udl so this is the magnitude of this point load and it will act at the half of this base so this total base of b by 2 will get divided into two base of each b by 4 and b by 4 so half of b by 2 is b by 4 b by 4 and this half udl will act as a point load at the half of this b by 2 base so thus this point load will act from this distance b by 4 from this edge b by 4 and from the center line it is distance is b by 4 similarly for this half udl it will act at the half of this base b by 2 so in this way if you apply this point load 
of magnitude p by 2 this total base b by 2 will get will get divided into two spans of distance b by 4 b by 4 because always the point load of udl act at a distance of half of base at the center of base similarly we have to find out the point load for this uh, last uvl so point load will act at a distance of one third of base from this maximum intensity so this is the line of maximum intensity and from this line point load will act at this distance of one third of base that is a by three so point load will act from this line of from this line of maximum intensity so its magnitude is p by 2 and this distance from this line of maximum intensity will be one third of base that is a by 3 so in this way we have determined the forces uh, in terms of point load and this location on the pin now by considering this location we have to find out the bending moment now remember that the this much portion of this pin is subjected to bending load and thus this is the effective span of pin subjected to bending load and the bending moment or the bending stress uh, bending moment or bending stress will be maximum at the center of this span that is at this point so let us uh, give name to this point as a point o and let us find out the bending moment at this point o which is the center of this effective portion of pin so let us write the equation for bending moment before that we will write the equation for bending stress so the bending stress is given by it is denoted by sigma b and it is given by equation mb upon i into y equation number one so here mb is the bending moment i is the moment of inertia and y is the distance from neutral axis uh, so with this loading condition this uh, pin is going to bend either like this okay or in this way so because of this loading condition this pin is going to bend but it is going to bend along this neutral axis so this is the neutral axis and uh, y is the distance from neutral axis so this distance will be y and it will be half of this diameter so as the diameter of pin is d so y will be half of this total diameter that is this distance is y d by 2 so let us find out the bending moment first so bending moment we know that it is maximum at this uh, half portion or the center line of this effective portion of pin so we have to find out this bending moment at point o now let us find out this bending moment at point o in order to find out bending moment at point o we have to either consider the left portion of uh, to the this point o or right portion of this pin towards point o from the point o either we have to consider left portion from the point o or either we have to consider the right portion from the point o so let us consider left portion to find out the bending moment so first force is p by 2 and the bending moment of this point uh, force p by 2 with respect to point o we have to write so the force is p by 2 and the perpendicular distance from the point o is a by 3 plus b by 4 plus b by 4 so we can write here a by 3 plus b by 4 plus b by 4 so p by 2 is the force and distance from this point o perpendicular distance is a by 3 plus b by 4 plus b by 4 okay now this uh, clockwise uh, this will act as a clockwise uh, bending moment so we will take it as a positive and this uh, second force p by 2 will create will apply the bending moment so we have to find out this bending moment because of this force p by 2 so as this p by 2 force will create the anti clockwise moment so we have to take it as a negative so minus p by 2 as a force into distance from this point o perpendicular distance is b by 4 so distance from this point force p by 2 from this point o is b by 4 so i will write perpendicular distance between this force and point o is b by 4 
so let us simplify this take p by 2 into common so we, we can get a by 3 plus this b by 4 plus b by 4 we will keep as it is let us see what happens so we have taken this p by 2 common so minus sign will be there for b by 4 so 1 b by 4 will get cancelled and finally we get the bending moment at point o which is the maximum bending moment as p by 2 into bracket a by 3 plus b by 4 so this is the bending moment maximum bending moment acting at the center of this effective portion of pin and as the bending moment is maximum at point o the bending stress will be also maximum at this point o so this is about the bending moment maximum bending moment now let us find out the moment of inertia i so moment of inertia i for a rod as the rod has circular cross section so i will be pi by 64 d raised to 4 where where d is the diameter of pin sorry we have to write here moment of inertia for pin knuckle pin so where d is the diameter of pin and similarly y is the distance from neutral axis it is half of diameter so y will be equal to d by 2 so let us put this mb bending moment maximum bending moment this moment of inertia and this y into equation 1 so put in equation 1 so we will get sigma b is equal to bending moment is p by 2 into bracket a by 3 plus b by 4 upon pi by 64 d raised to 4 into y is d by 2 so after simplification you will get this equation as 16 p into bracket a by 3 plus b by 4 upon pi d cube so this is the equation of bending stress maximum bending stress acting on this pin in the knuckle joint so from this equation we can find out either bending stress or if the permissible bending stress is known we can find out this diameter of pin subjected to bending stress